Ultrawide monitors have been here for quite some time, but in the past recent years, they have been gaining a huge popularity. The term 21 per 9 was firstly used by Philips in January 2009, almost 13 years ago, and it was more of a marketing move. The correct format should be 64 per 27, but that fraction could be reduced to 7 per 3 and manufacturers wanted it to seem like an evolution of 16 per 9 instead of one coming from the 4 per 3 aspect ratio. So they called it 21 per 9, which in reality is 21 and 1 third for 9. The first LCD television to be released with this aspect ratio was the Philips Cinema 21 per 9 TV and it was released in 2010 with early reviews calling it one of the coolest TVs to enter the market for some time. Philips was rapidly followed by other brands such as Vizio, LG, Samsung and even the Chinese panel manufacturer BOE, setting up a future trend. According to my research, the first 21 per 9 computer monitor was revealed by LG in 2012, offering a 29 inches IPS display with a resolution of 2560 per 1080 and of course 100% sRGB coverage alongside 5 milliseconds grey to grey response time. These innovations led us to the current market we have right now, where we have lots of ultra-wide options to pick from, and in several sizes such as 29 inches, 34 inches, 38 inches and even the ones called super ultra-wides, usually with 49 inches and featuring a 32 per 9 aspect ratio. Maybe a topic for another video. Overall, what really made these monitors gain such popularity was their improved working capabilities due to having way more horizontal space and of course, the immersion they brought in gaming scenarios compared to the commonly used 16 per 9 aspect ratio. I myself started transitioning to ultra wide aspect ratio some years ago and from the first moment I used one, I was sold. Sold to the point where all my computers are now having ultra wide monitors. There's so much more space to use and it improves the overall workflow, being it using several documents opened at once, programming or even editing videos. And if we think about it, even the recent smartphones use something closer to that, which is usually 20 per 9 and everyone loves it. And that is exactly why I'm bringing this video, to show you how ultra wide monitors are the way to go and what you have to win or lose when getting one. For today's sponsor we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, the Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is a video that I wanted to bring you for quite some time and it is the wide versus ultra wide video. So uh, in this video I want to show you several things. The first one is the, the field of view comparing the, the 16 per 9 the wide versus the 21 per 9 the ultra wide one. I want to show you how much you can get from going to a 16 per 9 monitor to a 21 per 9 one. Okay, the difference is big in terms of field of view and actually uh, and actual usability. But that's not my main focus. My main focus is for people that are actually trying to find out how much uh, how much in terms of performance they will win or they will lose changing resolutions. For example, people having a 1080p monitor, they want to know how much performance they will win they will win or lose, most likely lose, of course, going to a higher resolution such as 1080p ultra wide, for example, or going from a 1080p ultra wide once again back to to 16 per 9 to 1440p. Or if you have a normal 1440p monitor and you want to, to go to a 1440p ultra wide, you want to know the performance difference. So you want to know if your GPU is fast enough to do it or not. 
And this is a video to help in that scenario, so unless you have the RX 6800 like I do, the results won't be the same, so if you have let's say a 6700 XT, a 6800, uh, 6800 XT, the RTX 3070, the RTX 3070 Ti, or even maybe the RTX 3080, let's say you can use these results as a base if you have any of these GPUs, okay? And I'm testing it with this GPU because I want this video to be future proof. And the next generation GPUs, the, the mid-tier of the next generation, will most likely perform the same as the RX 6800, and that's exactly why I'm using this GPU. And well guys, let's just not make this longer. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, and let's go to the results. The first game tested today is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, using DirectX 12 and Ultra settings. As you can see with the 6800, the difference from 1080p to 1080p ultrawide is considerable, with 17 average FPS lost in the way. Going from 1080p ultrawide to 1440p isn't as big as before, but going once again to its ultrawide variant decreases the FPS count in around 17 average FPS, once again, which is interesting. As for 4K, we get a massive performance hit, but that's quite normal since we have way more horizontal pixels and way more vertical ones, so nothing new here. Oh, hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes... Sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out. Now we have Remedy's Control also using the X12 and high settings, which are the maximum ones apart from ray tracing. In this game, we have two different things compared to AC Valhalla. The first is that we have way more FPS at lower resolutions. And the second is that the FPS values drop much more as the resolution goes up. While at 1080p we have 174 average FPS, we have a big drop of almost 30 average FPS by going to 1080p ultra wide. Going to 1440p, we have a drop of almost 30 average FPS once again. And going from 1440p ultra wide to 4K, we have a drop of 34 average FPS, showing us how much this game can be resolution intensive. Now with Red Dead Redemption 2 using the usual high settings with Vulkan API. As you can see we're only using high settings, but for a game as heavy as this one, I think that our results are everything but bad. At 1080p we have an average of 151 FPS with 90 FPS in the 1% lows. As the resolution goes up, we can see that the 1% lows only decrease their values a bit, and that even the average FPS numbers are quite acceptable since even at 4K we have an average of 74 FPS. Mm -hmm. 
now with Need for Speed Heat using Ultra settings. I think that all games can benefit from having the higher field of view presented in ultra-wide monitors, but in my opinion, racing games are one of those that really bring a much better immersion by being played in an ultra-wide monitor. Now, in terms of performance, you must be asking yourself why the results are more or less the same apart from the 4K ones, and that is due to a CPU bottleneck. And that CPU bottleneck happens due to having DirectX 11 and the bad implementation of that same DirectX 11, where not even the Ryzen 5 5600X with 3800 MHz tuned RAM can achieve more than 110 average FPS, which is quite lame. But it is what it is. Let's hope the new Need for Speed brings DirectX 12 and well implemented. Now, to humiliate Need for Speed Heat in terms of performance, and several other things of course, we have Forza Horizon 4, running max settings and 2x MSAA on top of that. This game is the complete opposite of Need for Speed Heat. It is so well coded that even a CPU with 4 cores can run it well, as long as the other components aren't bad, as you can see in the video in the top right corner. We have a whopping 227 average FPS at 1080p and going to 1080p ultrawide decreased the value slightly, but still at around 200. The biggest difference was once again with 4K, as it should, and even at 4K this combo was delivering over 110 average FPS, with minimums being exceptionally good at all resolutions. Moving now to online shooters, we have Rainbow Six Siege, using Vulkan API, Ultra Settings and 100% Render Scale. This is another well-optimized title and although it is an old game, it has been receiving updates over the years, being them in terms of graphics, gameplays or performance. In terms of FPS, we can see at 1080p we get almost 500 average FPS, which is quite insane if you ask me, and raising the resolution to 1080p ultrawide reduces the numbers to 391, which are still off the charts. The biggest drop is once again going from 1440p ultrawide to 4K, raising the usual 70 to 80 average FPS difference to almost 100. Now we have the always asked for Call of Duty Warzone using max settings with ray tracing included. Remember that this was a gameplay and although I tried to replicate the most out of it, there will always be a bigger margin of error, so let's focus on the averages over the 1% lows. This is another game where I find it really good to have more field of view as I can see more characters moving, raising my chances to run or kill, which is very nice. This game is quite demanding in terms of CPU and RAM, at least for higher FPS numbers, and that can be seen here in the results, where we have an average of 185 FPS at 1080p and only around 5 FPS less at 1080p ultrawide. It is only after we change from 1440p to 1440p ultrawide that we can actually see the GPU sided results, since we're no longer bottlenecked at below 150 average FPS. Overall, it would be the same, with the biggest difference appearing at 1440p and above.
Getting closer to the final line, we have PUBG using ultra settings. In this game, having a higher field of view is also a plus, and while for some it may be distracting, for most it will be a joy to be able to watch more of the map, also bringing a higher possibility of watching enemy movements without even moving the camera. In terms of results, we can see that the averages go down gradually as expected, but the 1% lows remain almost untouched until 1440p ultra wide, which is also quite interesting. Overall, with a GPU as strong as this one, which will be the mid-end performance of the next generation, you'll be completely fine with any resolution. The final game tested today is Fortnite, using DirectX 11 and Epic settings. As you can see, 4K is not presented here since my native resolution is 1440p ultra wide, and this game wouldn't support using 4K unlike all the other ones. As you can see, Fortnite is now heavier than PUBG, who would have thought? And even this card struggles to get 100 average FPS at 1440p ultra wide. The 1% lows though are more or less in line up to 1440p and it is once again only at 1440p ultra wide that they do have a slight decrease. Interesting. Let's move on. Oh! To finalize, we have a chart with the 9 games overall performance, including FPS numbers and percentages. This, because you asked for it. Across all games, we can see that the performance drop isn't that big, and it is actually pretty consistent, with only 4K being an exception. But that is once again quite normal, since it has way more pixels than 1440p ultra wide. Percentage wise, in averages we have a 13% decrease going from 1080p to 1080p ultra wide, 10% going from 1080p ultra wide to 1440p, and around 14% going from 1440p to 1440p ultra wide, having 4K a decrease of 44% relatively to 1080p. So don't be afraid to change to an ultra wide resolution even if you have an RX 6700 XT or the RTX 3070. Although, things change a bit in the lower end card, so let me know in the comment section if you want to do a video like this, but to a lower end card like the RX 6600 XT. Well, as you can see the results are self-explanatory, and with a GPU as fast as this one, which will be the mid-tier uh, of the next generation, I suppose, according to some leaks, um, the thing is that uh, the performance drop isn't isn't much, at least going from 1080p to 1080p ultra wide or even from 1440p to 1440p ultra wide, which is a, a higher drop in most games, uh, but the biggest one is going from 1440p to 4K, which has more vertical and horizontal pixels. So, if, you're, if you have, let's say, a 1440p uh, monitor and you have a GPU as strong as this one or close to this, if you want to go to 1440p ultra wide, you can go to 1440p ultra wide without thinking much of it, because your GPU will be able to play most games at 75, 80 or even more FPS, depending on your settings of course, but even at max settings, a GPU like this one can play perfectly at let's say 100 FPS most of the games at 1440p ultra wide most of the games, and if you can't reach those 100 FPS, you can even decrease the settings a bit and just, just to reach that point. Or if you have a 75Hz monitor, you, just can, you can just push the settings to ultra and enjoy and still enjoy the 75 FPS. So as for the positive points of ultra wide, it's basically its field of view due to having a more cinematic aspect ratio, 21 per 9, so the field of view is way bigger as you can see in the tests. So you can actually see more of the map while playing, you can see more in the screen, you have more info in the screen. So unless you are really, really competitive and you want to play at, let's say, 4 per 3, this is a must. 
I get more information and I love it. For example, on Red Dead Redemption 2, I love to play at ultra wide because I, I get to see those landscapes uh, way more than using a, a wide monitor. And the same applies to almost any game. So in my opinion, you can enjoy way more gaming uh, using an ultra wide monitor comparing to the casual wide one. And well guys, let's not make this longer. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the results and what you think about wide versus ultra wide. If you like it, if you don't like it, if you don't like it, sorry. And if you're watching this part, leave a comment in the comment section saying you're watching this part because I really want to know how many people uh, actually watch the conclusion. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.